Yes. Yes. So she'll me meander back. Meander. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone here today. Uh, it's always a great op great time when we have opportunity to assemble as the Lord's people, family, and uh, uh, to, to worship Him together. And uh, it's good to see some folks that are visiting with us, sort of. And uh, <laughs> good to see everyone here. Uh, with us this morning. A few announcements uh, to be reminded of this morning. <clears throat> um, and first of all, there, there are a number of folks that uh, have uh, requested prayers uh, on their behalf, and I have a, a couple of uh, thank you notes that I've been requested to read to share with the church, to share with uh, those here. From Mike, uh, Mike says, thank you all for the prayers and the texts for my family and myself. I love you all. And also thank all thank you all for the beautiful flowers. Uh, and you recall uh, Mike's mom passed uh, last Saturday and the funeral was this week, Tuesday. And, uh, and I know that there were uh, uh, lots of thoughts and prayers on behalf of Mike and his family. And uh, so I uh, also have a, a card of thanks from Sherry. And she says, to my wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so very much for the love and concern you have shown for me in the past few months. I'm finally on the way to recovery. After a few months of therapy, my shoulder should be as good as new. I appreciate all the prayers, texts, phone calls, messages, cards, food, and flowers. I especially love uh, the gentle hugs and smiles. Also, uh, thanks also to those who have prepared to teach my Bible class while I am unable to. I don't understand how people can get through the difficult times in life without a loving, caring family as we have here in the Franklin County Church. My love to all, Sherry. So, thank you for those. Uh, it, it's always good to say thank you. Uh, and hopefully we don't ever get to the point we uh, assume uh, that thanks is there, but it's it's good to, to be reminded. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we do want to be reminded of, of a few folks here that uh, we want to continue to remember. And uh, several that I know of that are um, having some challenges. We have, there's a few notes in the bulletin, uh, not a lot. Uh, so I don't know a lot of, of changes that, that have been made in the list, but we do want to continue to remember all of these. I uh, do, do have one update uh, from Kathy Scott. The, uh, the uh, chemo treatments for the, the more potent uh, chemo, that part has ended, but now the longer part of uh, doing the, the less uh, potent uh, chemo begins. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, but she was having a little bit of difficulty with some nausea and dehydration, so they've delayed that beginning the second part uh, another week, uh, just to give her a little bit of a respite for starting up again. So, but uh, she and Russ very much appreciate all of the, the prayers on her behalf, and I know that many of you have also been communicating with with her, and it's very much appreciated. So thank you. <clears throat> As always, want to remind all of us to, to pray for those that are, we're reminded of in the scriptures, to pray for our leaders, uh, to always pray for those of our brethren who are being persecuted, and also a reminder of those that uh, we are supporting in some ways, and uh, to pray for the, the work that's being done in other countries as well. <clears throat> a reminder that today uh, we'll have our potluck dinner today, looking forward to that. And then we'll have our singing this afternoon uh, after that, around 12.30. And uh, we will not be here tonight, but we will uh, hope that everyone can stay and participate in our singing together. As I've commented before, there's a lot, we got a lot of good singers in the, in the church here. So hope that uh, everyone can make a plan to stay and be part of that as we worship together in song. As always, I want to remind everyone of the opportunities that we have to assemble, to stir one another up, to love and good works. That's uh, one of the great benefits that we have in our assembly here. 
And uh, if you're not here, then I'm missing your part of the input. And, uh, so uh, we've, we've always had a good Bible classes uh, Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and also at uh, Wednesday night at 7. <clears throat> and, uh, and then our worship assemblies at 10 and at 5 uh, on Sunday. So <clears throat> we always want to remind you and know that most of you are aware of that, but we do still have some folks that view what we're doing online too. So just a reminder of that. Well, in our singing this morning, uh, our first song will be number 501 in our song book, <clears throat> O Worship the King. In, uh, from Nehemiah, this, some of the words of Nehemiah in, uh, that we're studying in Sunday morning, we haven't got this far yet. But he says, you are the Lord, you alone. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. And you preserve all of them, and the host of heaven worships you. In uh, Psalm 47, uh, the psalmist recorded, sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. The words of this song remind us of the fact that our Savior, our God, is King, and we are part of that eternal kingdom, even now, uh, His church. <clears throat> oh, worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilion in splendor and girded with praise. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust, and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end. Our maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. This time we'll have opportunity for our contribution this morning. As we have been commanded the first day of the week that we meet, that we all give back a portion of what we have to continue to work at the church and reminding ourselves that a portion of what we have in this world continues this, but what the Lord really wants is 100% of, of all of us. Brother Mike, if you will, let's start, thank you. Dan, I call us the same friend about the other so we can see praise the Lord and worship you. And bless those who give that give back a portion of our earnings. We give with a given heart and we know it all belongs to you now. It's you, the Father of the King, Lord. Bless us with all our sins. Give now we pray. Amen. <laughs>
before our prayer, the next song we'll sing is uh, The Lord Has Been Mindful of Me, number 638. In Psalm 68 there, the psalmist said, Sing to God, sing praises to His name. Lift up a song to Him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exult before Him. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in His holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. Paul reminds us in his uh, writing to the Ephesians, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. The words of this song remind us of the fact that even though um, sometimes we may be remiss in thinking of our responsibility as Christians, as servants of the Lord, he's always mindful of us. And he always cares for us, oftentimes in many ways that we don't appreciate. But we do have confidence to know that he watches over us and cares for us. <clears throat> Why through the valley of shadow, or mountain, or troubled sea, and oft in the darkness have traveled, the Lord has been mindful of me. The Lord has been mindful of me. He blesses and blesses again. My God is the God of the living, how excellent is his name. Much more than my grief and my sorrow, much more than adversity, much more than the all I have given, the Lord has been mindful of me. The Lord has been mindful of me. He blesses and blesses again. My God is the God of the living. How excellent is his name. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, <clears throat> we are thankful for this opportunity that we have this morning to assemble and worship you. We pray that the things that we do will be acceptable in your sight. We pray that the attitudes that we have will be acceptable in your sight. We thank you today for uh, our visitors. We're thankful for every person who is here and help each one of us to have uh, the ability to concentrate on the things that are being done so that we might get full spiritual benefit from our meeting together. We realize that there are many who need our prayers and need your special care. And we pray that you be with all those that have been mentioned. We pray that you be with all those that we have thought about and not been mentioned this morning. And help each one in his um, specific needs that they'll be taken care of so that each person might be able to to serve you as you want them to, and that each person might be able to 
assemble with us and uh, worship you along with the rest of us. We are aware of the fact that there are many problems in our nation today. <clears throat> we pray that you would continue to overrule in all of the things that are done. We know that you have the, the power and the ability and that your plan, whatever it is, will be carried out. And we pray that uh, more and more people in our nation will understand that we must uh, turn to you and live according to your way rather than those examples that have been set on others and, and especially among some of the leaders in our nation. We pray that you continue to be with the elders of this congregation, that they will continue to make decisions that will help us to grow spiritually, that each one of us might be able to um, serve you better um, as time passes. We pray that you will be together this morning as he brings us a lesson from the Word. And we pray that um, we be able to um, understand that we'll be able to follow, that we'll be able to uh, see from your word how we are to think from the lessons provided and that how we might be able to respond to it. Help us always to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Savior. We pray in Christ's name. Before we take the Lord's Supper together, we'll sing uh, number 330 in remembrance. We're reminded of, of uh, the importance of partaking the Lord's Supper together and remembering uh, truly the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. <clears throat> As uh, Paul uh, reminded the church in Corinth, he said, I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. <clears throat> On this Lord's day we assemble round the table of the Lord. Happy hearts are made to tremble when we hear his blessed word. Thanks to God for such a Savior. Now enthroned in heaven above, thanks for this exalted favor, blessed memorial of his love. We recall his broken body as we look upon this bread. Give ye thanks, divide, and eat it. In my memory, he said. And this crimson cup reminds us of the dead seen long ago. When he died in pain and anguish, there his blood was made to flow. Thanks to God for such 
such a Savior, now enthroned in heaven above. Thanks for this exalted favor, blessed memorial of his love. We return to the table. We've been demanding remembrance of his great wonderful sacrifice. We're in remembrance in his memory. Being a church family of true believers, we take this seriously and we know that just to go through this and just remember what he did, but also in that remembrance what it means to us. This is our only way to salvation. This is our only way. And that we cannot do it ourselves. And he made this great sacrifice. At this time, as we remember that great sacrifice, we also look upon ourselves, and especially this week and the coming week, and examine ourselves with what we, uh, our strengths and our weaknesses and our mistakes, and that we, uh, we look forward to correcting those and know the great forgiveness that he shed his blood in his body for us. Mike, would you give us a blessing? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this prayer that your son's body that was beaten and pulled and cruel across the midst of our sin. For those who take this bread and do it, place the man in the In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cup and your son's blood that is still on the cross the mission of our sins. For those who take this cup and do it, please remind them to In Jesus' name we pray.
For Gary's lesson this morning, we'll sing uh, number 779, Without Him. Even as we think about the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, we're reminded that apart from Him, even as we've read uh, in some of Paul's letters, that you know, the blessings that we enjoy are only in Christ. And so without Him, uh, in many ways, life is fruitless. And the song reminds us of that. John, Jesus speaking to his disciples in John 15 said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Again, in uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, remember that you were at, uh, at that time separated from Christ alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. If it's convenient for you, would you stand with me while we sing? <clears throat> Without Him I could do nothing, without Him I'd surely fail, without Him I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? You can turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without him how lost I would be. Without him I would be dying, without him I'd be enslaved, without him life would be hopeless, but with Jesus, thank God, I'm saved. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? You can turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without him how lost I would be. Please be seated. If you'd like to mark in the song books, number 337, 337, Is Thy Heart Right With God? We'll sing after Gary's lesson. Good morning. It is uh, very good to see everybody here. <clears throat> I'm uh, extremely excited about, uh, well, this particular section over here. Uh, nothing against you, but uh, this particular section over here have a row full of um, Sullivans and uh, also uh, the, the Davis family, all the way from Texas, has uh, uh, come to visit as well. So it's uh, good to have my family to be able to come together and worship with my family. That's a... Uh, Ah, my heart's doing well. Okay. But, uh, all right, so we're going to move into our lesson because uh, I've, I've heard rumors of uh, an opportunity to be able to sit around and watch each other chew food and talk at the same time. And I'm very excited about that as, as well. Uh, but I also encourage you, if, you know, yes, definitely make plans to, to come and, and hang out, eat lunch, and, and, and visit. And then make sure you stay for singing as well. Uh, we've got uh, uh, great singers and it is, uh, you know, we're just practicing for heaven. That's all. This is just a just a, a warm up. 
Uh, and so uh, what a great opportunity to be able to do that, to, to worship together in, in song. And uh, we'll, we're going to do that this afternoon, Lord willing. So we've got the, uh, the title of the Dangers of, of Calvinism. And normally when somebody mentions Calvin, this is the first thing that pops in my head. Uh, this is a, a cute little blonde-headed kid that's a, that's a terror that has a, an awesome pet tiger that I would have, would love to have too. Not uh, as uh, exciting as, as that, uh, but something that's way more important. We're going to talk about uh, Calvinism as far as uh, what's uh, coming from uh, John Calvin. Which So you've got the dates of the 1509 to 1564. We're going to talk about somebody who was uh, teaching something, you know, over 500 years ago. But uh, we're still feeling the effects of today. And we, again, uh, lived in the 1500s. So we have uh, some people from the uh, you know, when when the Catholic Church basically took over the whole world. That that you know people say, well, that that's about the only religion that's out there, and they uh, had uh, incredible amounts of power. Finally, people were trying to figure out, so okay, what what's going on? That they're not doing what we're reading about. Once people started being able to read on their own and be able to to understand the scriptures, and you know, it wasn't all in Latin. And so they had to rely on somebody to say, here is what uh, this, you know, may sound like gibberish to you, but here is what it means. They had all the power because they had all the knowledge. And then suddenly people started being able to, to read and understand on their own. So you had people like Martin Luther. Uh, they wanted to, all right, so we need to fix what's going on with the Catholic Church. And that was his big thing. He wanted to fix it. Uh, then later that moved from fixing to, all right, we're done. And you have somebody like uh, John Calvin who, uh, again, got in a lot of trouble for saying we need to move away from the Catholic Church. We're going to start our own version here that's uh, uh, closer to what the, the Bible says. And so uh, he was asked uh, at one point why he, was, uh, why he was doing what he was doing. Why was he writing so much? Why was he uh, teaching so much? And his answer was that he thought that man was in a depressed and anxious state, and uh, he was uh, coming up with all of these things to help encourage people uh, to, to be able to help them. And again, even though he was around in the 1500s, which was a really, 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 really long time ago, well, his teachings are still around, still followed. Different groups take different parts of it. Some completely wholly take take the entire thing as, okay, yeah, that's what we're going to follow. And some say, well, uh, we're going to take these bits and pieces. We don't know so much about this one, but we like this over here. And so what I want to do is first look at this idea of, of Calvinism. Uh, but uh, more importantly, where does that fit in with the Bible? And I'm not picking on anybody. I, the lesson comes from two words that I read, and we'll get to those two words in, in just a minute. An answer to an article that somebody wrote, and, and there were two words thrown out in the um, um, comments section. And I was like, yes, that, that's, that's right, I, those two words. And so that kind of led to, well, let, let's talk about those two words. But again, we'll get to those two words in just a minute. But the Bible over and over and over and over and over again reminds us, hey, we can be fooled. We can be tricked. We can be led to believe that we're believing the absolute truth and we can be in error. And we're, we're, we're people, but just normal, everyday people. And so um, if somebody is not telling the truth, and we're watching them. We don't. We can't just sit there and wait for their nose to grow. Oh, that's a lie. I can see that you're plain as the nose on your face. We can't really do that. And so we have to be able to uh, learn the truth and then do something with it. And so uh, my goal this morning, hopefully, is to be able to talk about this again, not as picking on somebody. Again, it's uh, like Romans ten. You know, Paul talked about the Jews. They had this zeal for God, and we talked about it in class this morning. There are plenty of people out in the world who have a zeal for God, just not according to knowledge. They're heading down the wrong path really, really hard, but they're still heading down the wrong path, 
And for centuries, um, John Calvin in his teaching is helping people go down the wrong path. So again, looking at, and you've probably seen this before, I know I've, I've put up something similar to this before in the past uh, with Calvinism, but sometimes it's uh, given the, uh, the acronym TULIP. Uh, and we, so we, I'm gonna kind of uh, uh, go over just a little bit of each one of these. We won't spend the entire lesson on all of them. Uh, but the first, uh, the T, the total hereditary de depravity. And, and basically that's the idea that not only when we're born, we get, uh, you know, parents, uh, eye color and, 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 you know, hair color. And, you know, well, you can see my kids, natural good looks uh, from parents. <clears throat> not only that, also, along with genetics, you also will bring along sin. And, and we're, we're horrible, horrible people from the moment we're born. We are totally incapable of making a good decision. I mean, you've seen babies. They, they get rowdy. They say, God, feed me, feed me now. And uh, so just horrible, horrible people. We can't make a good decision on our own. And that's just the condition that we are in just as man. You have unconditional election. This idea that uh, before time began, God chose a certain group of people. We don't know who that certain group of people is. But I don't know if there's um, you know, a list. I don't know if he's got it written on a, a post-it note on his desk. I do that a lot. It's, uh, that's where I have on my list. I, it's in his head. We don't know, but there, is, there are a certain group of people that are going to be saved. Everybody else, no matter what they do, you're lost. Now, which kind of rolls into limited atonement. Again, there are certain people who get to take advantage of the blood of Christ. Uh, his, his blood was shed to atone for our sins. And again, according to this, for a certain number of people, but only to those who are, are chosen. And so again, with us being horrible, horrible people, and we can't uh, make right decisions on our own, we have this thing called irresistible grace. And that's where the Holy Spirit, again, if you're one of those that's chosen to be saved, then uh, the Holy Spirit says, okay, well, here is what you need to do to have faith in God, because faith in God is still necessary for salvation. And uh, normally with Calvinism, it's still faith only. Just to believe in Jesus as the Son of God, you can be saved. But how do you get that? Well, the Holy Spirit is going to give it to you. And if the Holy Spirit gives you faith, then, well, you're going to be converted because no one can say no to the Holy Spirit. So irresistible grace. If you're on the list to be saved, you're going to be saved whether you like it or not. And then the perseverance of the saints. Again, once you are given that faith by the Holy Spirit and you are on the list to be saved, then no matter what happens, you, you can't be lost. And if we see someone that we think, hey, that's a really good person, they're doing all these awesome things, surely they're the ones that have this faith in God that's going to allow them to be saved. And then all of a sudden they fall away and, and do something wrong. Well, obviously they were never saved in the first place. So I put the comment in there earlier about Mr. Calvin, why did you why did you write so much about all of these things? Well, people are in a depressed state. With 1500s, I don't were they depressed back then? Is that No, I'm sorry. That's <clears throat> that's a little before Bob's time. But um <clears throat> But evidently, so it's really, really depressing to be alive in the 1500s. So I'm going to write this and, and build everybody up and, and help make people happy. And uh, how is this going to make people happy? Are you saved? I hope I'm on the list. Again, we're not going to cover all of these things. What I want to do is look at uh, just a couple of things, again, the unconditional election and limited atonement, that's, that's basically us being predestined to be saved. We'll, we'll lump those two together, and then finally, once we're saved, can we be lost again?
the fact that we can be fooled over and over again, it, it, this uh, warning from the scriptures. And at the same time, we can go somewhere like 1 John 5, verse 13, and, and John points out very plainly, this is why I'm writing these things to you. So that you can know that you have eternal life. We can't go back to that chart that we just looked at. And if that was true, know that we're saved. Again, unless somebody can break into heaven and find that list. And yet the scriptures say, well, you can know. So which is it? I, I think we know the answer. But let's look at it uh, a little bit deeper. So we'll start off with this idea of predestination. And uh, from uh, John Calvin, he says, By predestination we mean the eternal decree of God, by which he determined with himself whatever he wished to happen with regard to every man. And so, again, there, there's so, it's like every single thing that has happened, God's made a whole list of everything. Like it, the, what you are doing right now, God made out a list, and, and that is exactly what you're supposed to be doing right now. And so every good thing, every bad thing, every person that's alive, every person that dies, every person that decides to break the law, everybody that decides to obey the law, God wrote it all out, and you don't have a choice. You're going to do it no matter what. And of course, heaven or hell. Here is who I'd like to be saved. Here is who I'd like to be lost. And they can't do anything about it. And so the two words that I saw, uh, if we are predestined, why try? If, and again, we read it over and over again in, in the writings here, if there is nothing we can do, whether we have faith that we're supposed to have, whether we are really, really good people, if we, if we do exactly what the scriptures say, and the list is there, no matter what we do, good or evil, why try? And of course, other people notice this as well. I have Stephen Hawking, who was a, uh, an atheist, didn't even believe in God, but then notice this about uh, Christians. I'll, I'll, you know, that's in the air quotes. Uh, the, again, those, those that are, you know, in, in the in the world of uh, Christendom, those who believe in predestination. I've noticed even people who claim everything is predestined and that we can do nothing to change it. Look before they cross the road. Why worry about it? If it's time, if you look or you don't, if something's coming, if something's not, I always do the left, right, and left again uh, because that's what uh, you know I learned as a kid. It's totally not necessary. If that bus is going to run over me, it's going to run over me. We have uh, this, uh, again, written a very, very long time ago, the Westminster uh, Confession used in various religions in Europe and, and definitely in, in America. Again, maybe not all of it all at one time, but again, parts and pieces are pulled out. So, okay, we like this. We're going to use this in, in our teachings. But here is what people learned about God and, and his views towards us and what he had planned towards us. God from all eternity did by the most wise and holy counsel of his own will freely and unchangeably ordained whatsoever comes to pass by the decree of God for the manifestation of his glory. Some men and angels are predestinated unto everlasting life and others foreordained to everlasting death. These angels and men thus predestinated and foreordained are particularly and unchangeably designed and their number so certain and definite that it cannot be either increased or diminished. Those predestined were chosen without any foresight of faith or good works or perseverance. There is a group of people, no matter what they do or don't do, that are going to be saved. There is a group of people, no matter what they do or don't do, that are going to be lost. And so again, why try? If that is the 
basis of the religion. No matter what we do, we can't change anything. And you've heard the, uh, the you know, fake it till you make it. Because again, those that um, are faithful, those who act like they're supposed to be acting, live and, and talk and, and, and are just, you know, like Christians are supposed to be. Well, well, maybe they're the ones that are saved. So it's not even fake it until you make it. It's fake it and hope you make it. We can never know until time's up, if, if that's the case. And so we look at this, you know, let's put it in a real world example. What if you were selected to never get a traffic ticket? Oh, Steve's paying attention now. It's, oh, no, 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 sorry. It's me. Not that anybody drives fast here, okay? I'm not, I'm not looking at anybody in particular. Oh, God, I drive too fast sometimes. But what if you were so, never, it doesn't matter what you do, you can be in uh, an accident. It's totally your fault. That's okay. We're going to let them pay for it. Uh, you go, to, uh, you know, you, you drive around the, uh, the perimeter around Atlanta and you see that sign that says 285. It says, I can go that fast. That's totally fine. Okay. You're not getting a ticket. I can, I can camp out. I can build a tent and, and, you know, campfire and all that in the left lane, go 20 miles an hour on the interstate and have a five mile uh, line behind me. I'm not getting a ticket for driving too slow in the fast lane because no matter what I do, I'm not, I'm not getting that. Okay, that'd be, that'd be great. <laughs> Completely, totally unfair and wrong. But even then on the other side, what if you were selected to always get a traffic ticket? Every time you get in a vehicle, you know, well, there's at least $50 for something. And it's probably going to be more than that. You could drive, uh, you know, 54 miles per hour. Sorry, that's a ticket. You probably, you're going too fast for conditions. That drive payment will get you every time. You can, you can stay in the right-hand lane, let everybody keep going around you. You keep going just, just the right amount of speed. You can never have an accident, no matter what it is. And I know there's some people who get tickets who, who claim, I never do anything wrong. Why am I getting this ticket? But what if it was, again, totally legit? You did nothing wrong. But you always, no matter what, you got to take it. That makes absolutely no sense. And of course, we can come up with millions of different examples of, of how we can put a real world example into this uh, spiritual application. But going to the scriptures, let's look at Matthew chapter 28. And, and our, our instructions, our task, are one of the things that, that we are supposed to be doing as uh, Christians, as a, as a congregation, is go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. Behold, I'm with you always to the end of the world. If we are predestined for heaven or hell, why would Jesus give us these instructions and not have something like, go therefore into all the world and tell them, I hope you're on the list. And just kind of leave it like that. And, and really, uh, save, your, save your, uh, your, your gas. You don't even have to go out and tell people that. It just is what it is. Whether we tell them or not, they are either on the list or they're not. And yet we have people going out encouraging people to obey the gospel. And, well, we don't know if you're going to be saved or not because we don't know if you're on the list or not. Revelation twenty two seventeen. 17. Spirit and the bride say, come, let the one who hears say, come, let the one who is thirsty come, let the one who desires take the water of life without price. That sounds like an invitation, right? That sounds like just, hey, listen, anybody, you, you, you've read all the way up to this point, anybody that, that too, wants to be on the side of good, wants to be on the side of, of God, wants to, to end this life on the, on the right side on Judgment Day, and wants to go to heaven, come on. It doesn't say, the Spirit and the Bride say, I hope you're on the list. 
we won't read all the verses uh, in between Romans and, and Revelation, but we could with the idea of why waste time writing all of those letters to individuals and churches telling them, listen, you need to do something different. You need to change. You need to transform. You need to repent. You need to come back. You need to do the right thing. I mean, again, this some are to groups of people. Some are to multiple groups of people. The churches of Galatia. I mean, there, there's a whole area. You've got all the, the church there in, in Rome. You've got individuals. What a waste of time when they could have all said, Dear Philemon, I hope you're on the list. And I hope I am too. Sincerely, Paul. Does the Bible teach predestination? I, was, I didn't put a picture of Phineas and Ferb up here, but yes, yes it does. Certain people will understand that reference. But so if Ephesians chapter 1, we look in uh, verse number 3. Uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So again, you know, we, we, we look at, we love verse number 3. As all spiritual blessings are found inside Christ. We talk about, so okay, what does it take to, to get inside Christ? And, and so we see in, in Galatians chapter 3, Romans chapter 6, you know, we're baptized into Christ. So that's where we have access to all these spiritual blessings. Don't you think eternal life in heaven would be a spiritual blessing? Access to the Father, a relationship with Him, being His, his children, wouldn't that be a, a tremendous spiritual blessing? And not just blessed us uh, with all these spiritual blessings if we're on God's list. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which, uh, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. And so we, we've looked at, hey, let's uh, pull out verses and just use them to uh, make a point. Because, well, we can do that with, with a lot of different things. What if we read around it? And again, instead of uh, verse number, just, just pulling out verse number five, he predestined us for adoption. Oh, there we go. He has chosen a certain number of people, and there are only a limited number of people who are going to be adopted into the family of God. What's the next question? Instead of that, again, reading all around it, again, all these spiritual blessings found inside Christ, and again, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So before time began, he chose us that we should be holy and blameless before him. There is a group of people that he is going to choose to be a part of his family, that he is going to adopt those who are holy and blameless, not those that are on the list that he has made up. That's open to everybody who wants to be holy and blameless and be obedient to his will. We see in uh, just a few verses later, verse number 11, in him we have uh, obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were uh, the first to hope in Christ might be to praise to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Again, we can pull out that, uh, we'll pull out a couple of words there and say, look, okay, so there you go. You are predestined. And yet he goes on to explain, here's how you were able to be in him. Here's how you're able to, to be in Christ so that you have access we see in uh, verse number 13, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him. When you were taught, when you believed the truth, when you obeyed the truth, that's when you were in him, not when you were added to some list again before time began. It's open to everyone. There is a certain type of person who is predestined for inheritance in heaven. 
It's those who are obedient to God, those who are holy and blameless, those who obey the gospel. Again, we see at Romans 8, uh, 29, uh, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among uh, many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. Those whom he justified, he also glorified. We know Paul you know, talks about being, us being called by the gospel. And then we're obedient to the gospel, and then we are able to be in Christ. So again, same type of thing he says here to the church in Rome. Didn't change the message from the church in Ephesus. We're called. We're obedient. We, when we obey the gospel, then we take on the image of Christ. Again, we don't... Uh, we don't look like him uh, physically. It's not that we're walking around in our in our white robes and you know a fancy sash belt, and everybody has to wear uh, uh, Birkenstock sandals and, and walk around here. Ladies, you're going to have to work on that growing the whole beard thing uh, to to really catch up. It's not that we're not that image of him. It's Jesus came here to do the will of the Father, no matter what. It even cost him his life. He said, "I'm okay with that." I am doing what God wants me to do. And so, you know, we look at, uh, again, this, uh, this uh, Jackie Chan. I can see that that is his son. I mean, I can totally see that, uh, that they, they totally can. And, and, you know, we can look around and, and see uh, parents and children as, oh, they're, they're in the image of them. Okay, that is not what he's talking about. It's, do we, can people look at us, our actions, hear us, see what we're doing, see how we're living. And so obviously they're, they're a Christian. They're a child of God. That's what he's looking for there. And so we are predestined in him to be saved. We get to decide whether we're in him or not. Only those that are in Christ are going to be saved. He has set it up. He has created the plan. He sent Jesus to die on the cross. He has taken care of everything for us. We decide whether to be in him or not. So again, once we're in there, uh, once we're in him, can we fall from the grace of God? And so we look at uh, you know, verses as simple as the uh, world's most famous verse, uh, John 3, 16. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So again, there's one more verse we could have thrown in to say, okay, that's whoever believes in him should not perish. Uh, that's uh, kind of wide open, not whoever is on the list. Uh, it's, it's whoever believes in him. But with this, again, there are those that, that take this. See, there you go. If you believe in Jesus, you're going to be saved, and you, you, you can never perish uh, because you believe in him. And so this grace of God that is offered, again, he created the entire universe for us. He put us here to live. He could have just let us go. He could have said, listen, I've, I've done this. I've, I've set you up. And, and now I'm just going to sit back and watch you mess it all up. Because, well, he knows everything. He knew we were going to sin. But instead, we're his children. I want the best for my children. And so I'm going to establish this way so that they can get rid of sin so that I can be with them for all eternity. They can be with me for all eternity. And so this grace is given to everyone. Unmerited favor. We don't deserve it. We, we can demand all we want, but it's, it's God giving us this way to heaven in spite of us, not because of us. See that Ephesians 2, 8, again, uh, for by grace you've been saved through faith. Again, our, our faith in him, our obedience to him, it's obeying his instructions. Not that we are so awesome that God can't help us save us because we totally deserve it. We totally do not deserve it. We see uh, Paul, Ephesians 3 and verse 7, uh, again, God gave me grace. He, he thought he was doing what God wanted him to do when he was on his way to Damascus to bring in those pesky Christians who had moved away from the law of Moses. God uh, allowed uh, some grace on Saul. He said, go uh, 
Somebody's going to tell you what you need to do. And of course, then he obeyed the gospel and, and moved on from there. So this, again, this grace that it is available to everyone. But again, Calvinism teaches that once we have access to this grace, then, well, we can't do anything to lose it. Let's look and see what the scripture said. The Bible teaches that we choose whether or not to hold on to it. We see in Galatians chapter 5, Paul talks about it as being uh, severed from Christ. If we, uh, again, if his warning to them was if you try to you know, go after the law of Moses and you know, they were stuck on circumcision. So, okay, we, we got to be circumcised first and then we can obey the gospel and become a Christian. So if you're going to do that, you know, you got to keep the whole law. That's one tiny part of the law. And even if you keep the whole law, it's not worth it. Because once you decide you're going to move away to something else, if you're in Christ and you start following something else, now you're severed from Christ. It's like if I, uh, if I cut off my arm, that is severing my arm. That means that it was actually attached at one point. It's a part of the body. And so the same way with Paul, you're a part of Christ. If you decide you're going to move away from the law of Christ, you're going to be cut off. That sounds like they're falling away. Because you can't be severed from something you're never attached to. Now John chapter 15, uh, verse 5, uh, or the first five verses, uh, Jesus describes it the same type of thing, this cutting off. Uh, again, I'm, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And if we aren't doing as we're supposed to be doing as branches, we can be pruned. If you've ever uh, gone out and done some yard work and decide you're going to cut some branches back, how many of you have cut branches back that uh, aren't attached to the tree or bush that you're uh, working on. That just means, you know, if you've done that, you, you've just cut a branch that kind of fell in or something, and just, you have to pull that one out. That's not really attached. But if you are actually truly pruning, there is something attached to that tree or the bush or the vine that you're cutting, and then suddenly it is not attached anymore. That means it's separated from and just to make sure we uh, are as plain and simple as possible, Hebrews 12, I'm sorry, verse number 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 12. Uh, Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God, but exhort one another every day as long as it's called a day that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Paul, writing to the churches of Galatia, Jesus talking to his disciples, uh, the letter to the Hebrews, uh, again, being written to Christians. Don't fall away. I mean, we, we've obeyed the gospel. We know what Jesus has done for us. We, we know heaven and hell. It's worth us continuing to do what God wants us to do. But God's not going to make us do it. We have a choice. If we choose wrong... We're going to be cut away. Uh, Revelation 2, uh, the first five verses, as uh, John is writing down what the Lord is telling him, and this, uh, again, the letter to the church in Ephesus. <clears throat> They've done some good things. But verse number four, have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. Again, there should be no doubt. This is an entire group of people. This is a group of Christians that he is writing to. You've fallen away from doing the work of your first love. Come back. Repent. Change. Or else, I'm going to remove your lampstand. Again, that's that's the description of, of us as the church. Uh, you know, we, we have... Uh, the Lord as the light. We're reflections of the light. We are, we are uh, created to help get the light out into the world. And so we have this light on top of a candle. We're, we're the candle. We hold that light up so other people can see. But if the light that we're trying to show, because we're doing the wrong thing, is not matching what Jesus wants us to be, well, we get that candle taken away. We're not a part of God's... Uh, lighting system anymore we've fallen away and that was his warning to the church there in Ephesus change but if we can't fall away in the first place why would he tell them that they needed to change 
And of course, there are so many other verses that we could look at, again, reminding us we need to do what God wants us to do. We can fall away. We aren't just uh, checking the box off and done. So we look at, again, our uh, original discussion. We were talking about something that somebody taught uh, you know, over 500 years ago. And so it's from an article I read a few days ago, but then even today, uh, I was, uh, somebody uh, mentioned on uh, Facebook, I don't know if y'all ever heard of that, but uh, uh, lamenting the fact that there are not people that stand up like John Calvin did to preach the gospel. And Again, we, we talked about some of this in, in class this morning. Again, there are those that are absolutely adamant to, and, and strong and, and, and very loud and, and uh, courageous in their tone as they, as they teach others what to do to be saved. But just because they're all of those adjectives doesn't mean that they're right. Just because they are uh, very strong in their opinions, just because... Uh, they, they sound religious just because they're really, really good people. Doesn't make it right. The scriptures make it right. And that's why the Bereans were an encouragement to Paul. Even though here he was, he was teaching them. And so, all right, listen, we're going we're gonna to fact check you real fast. We're going to go to the scriptures to see if what you're saying is actually true. Uh, from time to time, we uh, encourage each other to study on our own. There's different books that we can read. There's uh, websites we can go to like uh, uh, World Video Bible School and, and places like that, that uh, 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 GBN, that have these uh, videos and educational opportunities for us. And those are great resources. We need to make sure everything that we're looking at, watching, reading, listening to, we are sitting there with an open Bible and making sure what they're saying is absolutely true based on the scriptures, not based on, do I like the way this guy talks or not? And I promise you, the people on the other end of those videos will tell you exactly the same thing. Our eternal salvation is important, for enough, for, uh, important enough for us to know exactly what is in the scriptures when it comes to how to obey the gospel and what it takes after we obey the gospel. Are we taking advantage of this information that we have? Again, what a great time to be alive. There was a time in man's history when nobody could read, or not a whole lot of people could read. And yet they were counting on other people to tell them, here's what it takes to be pleasing to God. And many times they were led down the wrong path. We can read for ourselves are we? We're going to sing a song here in just a minute to encourage each other to make sure that we are right with God and that, you know, our, our heart is not this, uh, you know, blood pumper. It's, it's our thoughts, our mind is our heart right with God. And it's not just based on, hey, how does your heart feel about it? Because, again, we can, we can fool ourselves as well as other people fooling us. Our heart can be right with God. And we can know that we are saved if we're doing what he tells us to do. And so as we sing this song to encourage each other to have our hearts right with God, maybe you have questions. Maybe, maybe the answer is, I don't know. Well, that's one of the reasons that we're here. We're here to help study together, answer questions. Especially if it's, uh, is thy heart right with God? And the answer is no. Let's change the answer. Because we don't know how much time we have left on this earth. Either ourselves or even the earth in general or, or time. We, we, we don't know how much time we have. We need to always be able to answer this question as a yes. 
along with, and I know that because the scriptures back me up. If there's something we can do to help answer that in the affirmative, we'd love to be able to help. Even now as we stand and sing. <laughs> Have thine affections been nailed to the cross? Is thy heart right with God? Dost thou count all things for Jesus but lost? Is thy heart right with God? Is thy heart right with God? Washed in the crimson blood, cleansed and made holy, humble and holy. Right in the sight of God. Hast thou dominion or self and or sin? Is thy heart right with God? Over all evil without and within. Is thy heart right with God? Is thy heart right with God? Washed in the crimson flood. Humble and holy, right in the sight of God. Are all thy powers under Jesus' control? Is thy heart right with God? Does he each moment abide in thy soul? Is thy heart right with God? Is thy heart right with God? Washed in the crimson flood, cleansed and made holy, humble and lowly, right in the sight of God. Thank you, Gary. You know, there's a, there's a lot of that kind of stuff that permeates a lot of different man-made religions, and sometimes it creeps into the church as well some of those thoughts, uh, ideas. And so we always need to be sure that we know what the scriptures say and follow what the scriptures say. Thank you for that encouragement, Gary. Thanks to all of you who are with us this morning and, and uh, uh, looking forward to uh, sharing a meal with you. And uh, uh, Dean is going to lead us in our closing prayer. And uh, we'll also offer thanks for the food that we're about to partake in. Let's pray again. Lord, our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day in which you have given us to worship you, to focus on you, and to realize the truth which you have given to everyone on this earth. And we thank you for allowing us to be able to make the decisions that we make based off your truth, knowing that you have promised to take care of each and every one of us and supply us with what we need if we seek you first in our lives. And we pray that you will help us as we make decisions in this life, regardless of what those decisions may be, that they will all be based off the truth of your word. And we pray that you'll help us to realize there's many in this world who are in a lost condition, who may believe more in mankind than in you. They believe more of what people say than what you say. And we pray that, as has been mentioned here today, that we will study your word, learn from it, and realize the only truth in this world that is true is your word. And we pray that you'll watch after us as we leave here, that we will look for those who need to be taught, that you have chosen each one of us as individuals to be able to learn and hear your word and to make a choice. And we know you have provided a way for us and we know that someone has taught us in the past that we can be closer to you. And we pray that you'll help us to teach others that they may be closer to you. And whether it be here locally in the foreign mission field or wherever it may be, that we will find those good and honest souls who are willing to listen to your word and to be able to know the truth and know that they have a choice. And everyone has that choice to make. Please watch after those who are sick and ill and not able to be here. 
those who have had surgery, those who are going through different ailments, that they may be able to recover, especially if they're not here, and you'll bless them and watch after them. And you help us to make the right decisions in this life as we look and see all the things that go on in this life. Please continue to watch after the eldership here and help them to make the right decisions and help us to be able to follow you as we should. Watch after Gary as he continues to teach, to teach lessons as he did here today, knowing that we need your truth. Please bless us as we take the food today and that we will have fellowship with one another in a peaceful, joyous way, knowing that we care for one another and we should be the family you would have us to be. In Jesus' name.